What is more anabolic, MK677 or enclomiphene? Well, to keep things simple, if someone has average testosterone and responds well to a standard dosage of enclomiphene, they can expect their testosterone to double. If someone has average IGF-1 and responds well to a standard dosage of MK677, they can expect their IGF-1 to approximately double. So which hormone is more powerful? Well, based on my research examining studies where they gave participants testosterone or growth hormone, doubling testosterone tends to lead to approximately a 15 to 25% increase in lean mass compared to a control group over a few months, and doubling IGF-1 levels tends to lead to a 5 to 10% increase in lean mass over a few months. But increasing IGF-1 is usually accompanied by more water weight than increasing testosterone, so we're going to round up and say that doubling testosterone is about three times as strong as doubling IGF-1, holding all else constant. But, although my personal experiments conflict with this, enclomiphene tends to decrease IGF-1 by around 50% based on the scientific literature, and it does tend to slightly raise SHBGs, so if testosterone doubles, free testosterone only increases by 80-90%. to 90%. So overall, I'd say it's fairly close, but enclomiphene on average probably still has a slight edge. So I'd say that a standard to low dosage of enclomiphene will generally be as anabolic as a standard to high dosage of MK677. Of course, this all depends on individual variability. In general, guys with low testosterone will benefit even more from enclomiphene, and guys with low IGF-1 will benefit even more from MK677. But there are exceptions as well. In a small minority of people, MK677 dramatically increases prolactin, in which case enclomiphene may be much more anabolic. And in a small minority of people, enclomiphene dramatically increases SHBG, in which case MK may actually be more anabolic than NCLO. The most insight, of course, can be obtained from actual experimentation.